We are live on the air. Yes, we are. All right. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Summit Alliance Advantage. Uh, this is our weekly training. Um, we are recording today, so uh, we'll have this uh, training available for future reference on the back office of the website. So um, many of you, just for those of you here, I believe everyone here is registered. If you haven't, you know, go ahead and register. Um, you know, I encourage you, of course, the, uh, there's new additions being made every day. Uh, as a matter of fact, to the front page of the Summit Alliance Advantage website, which all of you get a free replicated site of, so make sure uh, you look into that. But we have the uh, business overview available there as well. So, you know, if you're looking to get people, uh, you know, going right away, introduced to the business, you know, that's a great resource that you can use there as well. So um, make sure and take advantage of that. Now, as I mentioned, uh, this is being recorded for the back office use. Um, you, you know, we have a lot of training available. You know, of course, uh, we, we want to make sure that you're well equipped, right? If you're equipped, if you have the knowledge, you're going to have the confidence to go out there and you'll feel comfortable in the home. Uh, you'll feel just solid leading your clients through, uh, you know, whatever presentation that you're sitting down for, you know, whatever need it is that you're there for. And um, we're going to talk about presenting mortgage protection a little bit and also IUL. Um, but starting off with mortgage protection, now, just so you know, we can go through, I'm going to go through, you know, kind of what to say, what to do in the home. But ultimately, keep this in mind. When you're out there with your clients, the clients, they buy you. They don't buy the insurance company. They don't really buy, you know, the product. They're looking to you as the professional to guide them through the process to make sure that you take care of their need. And if they feel comfortable with you, that you have a sincere, uh, you know, um, just willingness to go out there and identify the need and make sure it fits in their budget and really put something that's in their best interest as if you were working with your own family. And, uh, you know, that holds, um, I mean, gosh, just from, uh, that, that holds through to the test of time. You know, I've done so many presentations and ultimately um, there's been so many times where I've walked out of the home and the client hasn't even asked me what company that is. And again, that's because they bought the agent and, uh, you, you know, you need to, you know, you've heard this said before, uh, you know, so many people get into the insurance business. It's a great business. Uh, you know, you can do a lot of good things for families. You can do a lot of good things for your own family. But when the business gets inside of you, that's when you become great at the business. And so, you, you know, keep that in mind. And, uh, uh, you know, just, so just take that to heart when you're sitting down with your clients and you're trying to identify the need. Because, again, uh, you know, just as the first uh, uh, bullet point says there, greeting your clients warmly and sincerely. Uh, you know, of course, that's one of the first steps when you get to the home. You've got the appointment set. You've got clients. You have someone waiting on you to come visit them. Uh, you know, we talked about, uh, you know, pulling up to the home. You don't want to park in the driveway, little things like that. But ultimately, when you get to the door, you want to greet them, you know, warmly and sincerely. You know, you don't want to come off as, um, you know, the what I call the corny greeting, right? You know, just, uh, uh, oh, you have a nice lawn and it's yellow. <laughs> I mean, stuff like that. You know, you want to, uh, if you're, if you can sincerely relate to it, you know, do that, uh, you know, be complimentative of, of what you relate to and, and how, you know, something that you identify with that person. We all have something in common with everybody, uh, you know, whether it be kids, that's a common denominator between a lot of people, family, right? Uh, you know, or pictures on the wall, or maybe, maybe you like cars or, uh, you know, maybe you see they like hunting, you like, hunting, whatever the case may be, identify with something sincerely about it, you know, very very basic stuff. Now, of course, we've talked about you want to get to the kitchen table. You don't want to do the presentation um, in, uh, in the living room at the coffee table with, with Judge Judy on, on the TV, right? You want to eliminate the distractions because uh, you know what will happen. You're sitting there going into the presentation and um, you're not getting the answers or the responses because they're engaged in the remote control on the TV. So uh, get to the kitchen table. Again, that's where all business is done. Uh, in the home with the insurance agent. So, you know, direct them to the kitchen table. Well, uh, you know, oh, just have a seat. It's nice and comfortable. You know, I'd love to, Mr. Client, but I have my mobile office that I take with me. If you don't mind, if we could just sit at the kitchen table, that way I could kind of uh, get set up and, you know, make sure I get you the information that you're looking for today. And, uh, you know, again, um, and I just uh, stay away from the word information, <laughs> uh, as I just said. Um, but, but, you know, again, just, just let them know, direct them to the kitchen table. That way you can sit down and identify the need and, and uh, make sure it fits in their budget. And basic steps, you know, you're going to go over the product after you, uh, you've greeted them. You know, you want to go over what it's going to do, you know, of course, while you're there, what it is. 
and then you want to build a little bit of value. Um, you know, pretty basic. Um, you know, everyone um, uh, wants to purchase something that, uh, you know, they feel is going to be of value to them. I mean, it's, you know, pretty obvious statement there. Um, identify their need. You know, that's important. And, uh, you know, I have a specific question that I ask uh, in my in-home presentation to help me identify that need, uh, you know, as opposed to kind of talking about the, uh, the, the different benefits and trying to upsell them on disability if they're not looking for disability or critical illness. Uh, you know, if they're just looking for the death benefit, that's what I'm trying to identify. If they're looking for just disability, then I'm, you know, I'm trying to uh, work the program around that. That's what I've uh, identified as their need. And then, of course, you're going to give them options. And, uh, you know, we'll get into some of that, what we're going to go over today. This is, the, this is the PowerPoint version of the flip chart. Now, this is an agent preference thing. Um, you know, me, myself, I like to really, I present from the lead sheet. Um, you know, I, I kind of use the, uh, uh, the flip chart as a reference, you know, just at, at certain periods in time if I feel like I need to, uh, you know, get the point across a little bit more. But for the most part, um, utilizing the flip chart, it's going to help you build that value. It's going to help you kind of kind of guide you through uh, through the presentation. And looking at it here, you know, what is mortgage protection? You know, just kind of, uh, uh, you know, this is just some brief statistics. You know, many of you have seen these statistics, but, uh, you know, I feel they're pretty, pretty powerful, uh, especially considering that the average client that you'll sit down with in mortgage protection is going to be between these ages, especially, you know, between ages 40, 55, um, you're going to get a lot of your mortgage protection clients. And when someone sees that, uh, you know, statistics show that there's a 25% chance of passing away before paying off a 30-year a mortgage, that kind of wakes them up a little bit. Well, wait a minute, you know, maybe I need to protect this asset a little bit more. Maybe I don't want to, uh, you know, leave all of my hard-earned dollars to the, to the bank or the mortgage company if, if uh, my house becomes foreclosed on. So, uh, you know, just kind of briefly going over the statistics. And then, again, as the first bullet point says, you know, well, what is mortgage protection? You know, and again, this is kind of help, uh, helping you build a little bit of value. And, you know, and this is something you can simply read. I recommend that, you, you know, you get used to this. You kind of personalize it. That way you're having more of a conversation with them. Of course, again, you can use the flip chart. Read it to them. Let them know. You know, your home, uh, we can all agree, you know, that our home is probably one of the most biggest assets uh, you, you know, or decisions that we make as a family. Would you, would you agree with that? Yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, so, okay, great. So, um, you know, and if, if something happens to, uh, you know, a family member or an income, in most cases, it probably takes two incomes to support the household. You know, this is kind of, I'm conversating with my client and, uh, you know, they'll, well, yeah, you know, especially here, gosh, you know, so, um, you know, if, if y'all were ever in a situation where one of your incomes were to stop, uh, you know, would that, would that put the, potentially put the house in jeopardy? Well, yeah, I mean, that would definitely make things tough. Well, when, what if one of your incomes was eliminated? And, uh, you, you know, again, um, so the loss of one income is typically, you know, can cause financial stress, right? Um, so, again, we want to relieve your family of that financial stress and grief. You know, they're already going to be grieving at the loss of a loved one. You know, it's tough enough to deal with that. We don't want the mortgage company, I'll, do, I'll knock on the table, you know, we don't want the mortgage company knocking at the door, you know, asking for payment. You know, getting those letters, notice of foreclosure, you know, because they're going to want their money. And, unfortunately, the death certificate you know, your husband, your wife's death certificate's not going to take care of that. And, uh, you know, we don't want all of that money that you put into the, you know, hard-earned dollars into the walls of the home going to the mortgage company. So, you know, again, this kind of helps you identify what mortgage protection is and the purpose of mortgage protection. You're letting them know that, you know, this is going to protect the home in case of a death. You're letting them know that this is going to provide financial resources to help your family make a decision, whether that be pay off the home, or refinance it till uh, you know get get in a better situation, or maybe sell the home. Give them time to sell the home, so they say they can move somewhere else. You never know what happened. You know maybe the situation they don't want to stay at the home anymore. You never know. So uh, again, this is going to give them the financial resources to make a decision. And uh, you know I love saying that to my clients because I feel that that's a very powerful statement um, when when they realize that okay, um, you know my family's if if, if I don't come home. And they lose my income, you know. My wife here, it, it's it's not going to be good. She's not going to be able to pay for this. So, uh, you know, again, in saying that, you know, I'm gonna, we're going to help. We're going to provide the financial resources for your family to make a decision. Now, some things to ask yourself, and you can talk. You know, again, this is help building a little bit more value. You know, many families are forced to leave their home. 
uh, you know, due to economic hardship caused by death, disability, or unemployment. You know, uh, a lot of people, of course, you know, some people may have life insurance through their employer. Uh, you know, what's great about that is it's, you know, one of the most affordable ways to get life insurance. What's not so great about that is, unfortunately, we're not in control of that. Human resources could change the benefits program at work. Um, they could, you know, you could decide to leave your job. They could lay you off. And when any of that happens, you're, you know, you could lose your coverage. Um, you know, what's great about mortgage protection is you're in control of it. You know, you can take control of this program. And, uh, you know, if you passed away, this, we can make sure that your family's going to have, no, uh, have enough money to pay off the mortgage. You know, and if, if uh, it, it, there's the question, you know, if you were to die, would your family have enough money to pay off the mortgage? And you can ask them, well, you know, I got life insurance through, um, through my work. We could possibly use that. It's like, well, you know, life insurance, and I'll, I'll tell my clients this, life insurance is designed to replace loss of income. Mortgage protection is designed to create an instant asset for your family. That way they don't have to worry about taking care of the home. Because, again, if, you know, something happens to you, you don't want your family having to use your life insurance to pay for the mortgage. What about living? What about the cost of living? I mean, you know, so, again, you, you're, you're opening up your client's eyes to exactly why we're here, what we're doing today. We're putting a program in place that's going to protect the home. This is designed around the home. I've even been in a situation where clients have asked me, and this has happened many times, I've gotten them covered with mortgage protection. We've gotten them taken care of. I'm leaving the home. Oh, by the way, Jason, do you sell life insurance too? Well, you know, yes, I do. We can take care of that as well. But in reality, they just got life insurance because basically, you know, when someone dies, someone gets a check, right? That's life insurance. It's most people's perception of life insurance, right? So... <clears throat> Now, also, you know, I talk to I'll ask them the question, you know, if you were able to work for an extended period of time, you know, whether that be from illness or disability, you know, does your family have something in place? You know, what if you were diagnosed with cancer, have a heart attack or a stroke or some type of critical illness or injury that prevents you from working and you lost, lost that income? You know, do you have something in place that would help pay the mortgage? You know, we can take a look at that. Is that, uh, you know, something that you're looking at? You know, if you lost your job, would you still be able to pay for your insurance payments? You know, and, and this is uh, an unemployment benefit that a lot of mortgage protection plans have. And how I refer to this, I let my clients know, look, what's good about mortgage protection, um, you may lose your benefits at work, but you're not going to lose your, your benefits here if you become unemployed. Now, of course, it's state filed unemployment, so if you're unemployed, you get your coverage, and most, most carriers will pay for your coverage for a period of six months, basically giving you time to regain employment, get back on your feet, and then you can start paying for your coverage. But if during that time, if something happens to you and you're not, you know, uh, pass away or something, your family's taken care of. So, uh, you know, again, a lot of great benefits to mortgage protection. You know, the plan is going to uh, prevent your family from possibly losing the place they call home due to an unforeseen tragedy. You know, uh, uh, we also have the ability, you know, to get your money back. If you, if you like the idea of the money back, you know, we have the ability to cover you in case of critical illness. You know, we don't, we don't know, you know, when we're going to pass away, just like it's the little cartoon, um, you know, shows here. We don't, we don't know when we're going to pass away. You know, we don't know when that time is. Um, so, unfortunately, I, I can't show up the day before you pass away to get you covered. But we can take care of it today. <laughs> you, know, um, you know, and death is always untimely. So, let's, let, you know, let's protect that investment. So, let's talk about what's important to you. So, basically, this is kind of where I have a copy of the lead sheet. And I have it out on the table. Now, one other, one other note when I'm doing my presentation, I have other applications out that I, that I keep with me, copies of applications, um, just so they can see my, that other clients have purchased. You know, it's kind of just a little uh, uh, giving the client permission to buy. If someone sees that, okay, this, the, you know, there's other people that have bought from this guy, so it must be okay for me to buy. It's basically what I'm doing with that, just a little tip there. Um, but, again, as I'm – sitting down with them, and, I, and I'm kind of going into the presentation, I'm looking to identify what is important to them. So the question that I ask my clients all the time at, at every single mortgage protection presentation, when you filled this letter out and sent it in, was the death benefit most important to you? And the reason I ask that, I don't ask them, well, why did you fill this out and send it in? What were you looking for when you filled this out and sent it in? What do you think they're going to say? 
I was about everything, or I was just looking for information. I was just trying to find out how much it costs. Just want information. But by asking them, is the death benefit most important to you? I'm pinpointing exactly their need, what they're looking for. And they're going to tell me based on that question. They're going to say, well, no, Jason, I actually, I was looking at the disability benefits. Or I like this critical illness. You know, I've got a family history of cancer. And I want to make sure in case something happens that, that my family's taken care of. Or nine times out of ten, they're going to tell me, well, yeah, Jason, I, and, and, uh, death is what I was looking for. In case I pass away, I want to make sure the house is paid off. And I, I, you know, I, I want to know a little bit about that money back also. So, again, I'm asking a specific question. They're going to give me a yes or no answer, or they're going to tell me what they're looking for. Now, based on that, I'm going to go through, and then I'm going to basically qualify what they're looking for qualify the company that I'm going to direct them to, and I'm going to ask them a few medical questions, and I'm going to let them know. You know, the good thing about mortgage protection and applying for mortgage protection is we don't have to send out an examiner to draw blood. We don't have to send out an examiner to, you know, urine specimen or check your heart rate or anything like that. We're simply going to ask a few medical questions, and there's no exam. So you don't have to worry about, you know, the needles or anything like that. And, uh, I'm going to go over and put together some options. Now, this is where I'll put together. And now, I, of course, when I ask them those medical questions, that's going to direct me as to which company that pretty much that I'm going to take them in most cases. In most cases, the client base that we're dealing with, you'll get a lot of no answers. You'll be able to, you know, direct them to your front-running company. If that's Royal Neighbors, that's great. It's a good choice. Non-medical up to 500000 And then I'm going to put together some plans for them. Now, when I'm putting together my plans, you know, I'll, if they haven't already offered me something to drink or a glass of water at this point, I'll ask for a glass of water. You know, uh, Miss John, I uh, apologize. Uh, I've been talking so much. Do you mind uh, if I have a glass of water? You haven't had a glass of water I could have. Just simply ask them. Now, I'll do this just to give a little bit of time to put together options, and I'll pull out my phone. That's what I'll run my mobile quotes on, rnaquotes.org, and, and I'll run a, uh, a couple of quotes. And I always give them a good, better, or best option. You'll notice the quote sheet has three options here. You can utilize the quote sheet. Sometimes I'll forget to pull out the quote sheet, and I just flip over the lead sheet, and I write down the options on the back of the lead sheet. And I'll total up the two. I'll write down his premium. I'll write down her premium if I'm visiting with a couple. And then I'll total it up. And I'm not going to tell them, well, yours is, sir, yours is $60 a month. Ma'am, yours is $50. i am going to tell them uh, to cover mortgage protection for both of you, it's $110 a month. So I total up, and I give them one price. And this is going to cover you. And again, I give them a good, better, or best. Now, my middle option is going to be around $85 if my third option is, is a lot by covering the full amount. So I'll, I'll give them an option. Say their mortgage is $250,000. So my, my last option is going to be the full amount. That's going to be the highest price. Then I may go down to $200,000 or $175,000 for my middle option. And then I may go down to 150000 for the first option. Again, a good, better, or best. Now, and I'll explain to them, you know, this first option and, and what's great about mortgage protection, what we're looking to do today is protect the home. Uh, you know, we want to put something in place that, God forbid, if something happens, you know, hit my bus, whatever, we don't come home, we lose our income, that we can make sure that our family has the home taken care of. Now, I know this says $150,000 here. This is what you'll get. You know, it's only 150000 but as you pay off the mortgage, you're going to be paying the mortgage down. And if something happens, it may happen later, but if it happens sooner, at least your wife will get a check for 150000 and she'll be able to pay off the majority of it or at least make payments till she can make a decision. And again, come out with the, with the line. You know, at least you'll have the financial resources to make a decision. So when I slide this over and I let them look, I've got my three options good, better, or best, they're looking at those options. I'm really doing one thing here. I'm paying attention to the client, and I'm trying to read their body language and see what, how they're feeling towards the options that they're looking at. If they're looking at these options and they see, and, and they're kind of grimacing, and they're just you know, kind of moving in their chair looking at each other like, ugh, this doesn't look good, immediately, I've already, while they're looking at it, I've already, I'm already putting together a quote for a lower option. Maybe it's 50000 
Maybe it's 25,000. And while they're looking at that, if I notice that grimace or that look or that un just being uncomfortable with the quote, give me one second. Let me see that. 50,000. 49 bucks a month. And I'll write down a lower price. Does that look a little more comfortable to you? And I'll show it to them, then I'm quiet. Because I'm trying to find the hot button, basically. The client had uh, a price in mind that they were willing to pay, that they were willing uh, to be comfortable with for mortgage protection before I even arrived at the home. They were probably, man, you know, if, this, if I could get away with this for 60 bucks a month, I'll probably, I'll, probably take, I'll probably do it, or whatever. But again, clients have a certain price in mind or something that they're comfortable with. And I call it the hot button. That's what I'm trying to find. That's why I give them good, better, or best. So again, you can see how we, I'll just kind of work it, work it back. I'll break it down. And if they're looking at that, well, well, Jason, this is only 50,000. Well, let me ask you, this is, this is commonly referred to as a payments protection program. You know, a lot of clients take advantage of this because it's at least going to give your, you know, your wife, again, the financial resources to make the mortgage payments if something were to happen. How much is your monthly mortgage payment? Oh, it's 2,000 a month. Okay, great. Well, this is enough to give you mortgage, your wife, Sue, mortgage payments for two years. Just break it down. Just present it to them. Okay, yeah, you know, you're right. And I'll, I'll sometimes joke with, you know, everybody wants to drive, you know, the Bentley or the Mercedes, but sometimes you got to get there in the, the Yugo, right? So it's still serving the same purpose. You're still getting there. You're still providing protection for the home, protection for the family, right? That's the ultimate goal. That's what we're looking to do. So, um, you know, with that, that's pretty much it on the mortgage protection presentation. Now, they're going to make a decision. They're going to look at that, and they're going to decide, you know, this, Jason, this one looks comfortable. Okay, great. I'll ask them now, if you happen to be taking any medications, you know, that, that, that uh, we didn't go over in the medical questions, if you don't mind getting those out, and then also I need to see your license. Start to fill out the application. Assume the close. Walk right through it. Hopefully uh, that helped with the uh, in-home presentation for, for mortgage protection last week we uh, or last yeah last week or so on last Thursday I think we went over final expense um, but you know now we're gonna uh, now we went over mortgage protection now we're about to go over the IUL and utilizing the flip chart in the IUL market so none other better to do that. Then Mr. IUL himself, Mr. I made IUL presenting easy, <laughs> Ray McDonald. So, Ray, here you are. Take it away. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, guys. And, uh, you know, this is a, you know, this flip chart is uh, pretty awesome. If you don't have a flip chart, uh, you know, uh, you definitely want to get one. Um, you know, uh, you guys could order it online from the, on the uh, from us or contact uh Jason or myself or Kathy or one of us at the office and say you want a flip chart. So these flip charts are, are handy to have. You know, you would definitely want to have them around there. They have all three presentations on here. They have your final expense, they have your mortgage protection, and they also have the IUL uh, presentation. And it's, and it's the way it's, you know, it's easy to carry and, and you're always ready to go. Because you really don't know when you're going to be able to do a presentation. I mean, you could really be, you know, having having lunch at McDonald's, whatever, and having a conversation with somebody, and somebody asks you a question about, hey, what do you do? And then, boom, you got your little flip chart, and you can just, just do it real quick, you know? So um, so I encourage everybody to get the flip chart. And those of you guys who are watching this video on, on the website right now or online, uh, you know, uh, definitely want to order your flip chart, um, you know, from, from us. And there's, and, uh, there's information about the flip chart on the website, or, or again, you can contact uh, us here at the home office. So just real quick, um, on, on the IUL presentation, uh, it's very simple. Um, and, um, and so uh, basically what I start off with, you know, with the big circle, circle presentation. Again, you know, and, and, you know it's, it's good to have this. And you know, imagine having this, uh, this flip chart presentation and then, Again, you're at a Starbucks or you're at a restaurant or whatever, and you can people ask you what you do. We always talk about how the big circle, little circle presentation is a door opener for everything. And so this, you can do this, this one sheet, tell somebody ask you what you do, and boom, you do the big circle, little circle presentation. But for the sake of this training that we're doing this morning, 
and you know, and for the presentation, uh, you know, the flip chart presentation again in the big circle, circle presentation. I, uh, you know, the most important thing is that you always want to remember is that when you're presenting the flip chart presentation and showing this to somebody for the very first time, always, always, always remember how you felt the first time you saw the presentation. I can't stress that enough because um, you don't want to just get so mundane in the presentation that you become kind of callous to it. To remember when you, when they saw it for the first time, or when, was, when you saw it for the first time, how it affected you. That's how it's affecting them, and and this is helping them with the uh, on uh, with uh, as far as uh, you know uh, making them feel because um, you know sales is a transfer of, of emotions, and this is an emotional uh, sale. So real quick. I, I do the uh, big circle, little circle presentation. I'm just going to do it very briefly, um, this part of the presentation. So I told the client, you know, it's Mr. Client, you know, imagine there's 100 random people today turning 65. Again, I'm sitting right in front of them in the living room or in the, at, uh, in the kitchen table or, you know, wherever we're meeting at. And I, I ask them, so imagine 100 people today turning 65. Obviously, there's more than 100 people today turning 65. But for the sake of this presentation, and imagine that 97% of them are in this big circle, meaning they're going to be dead or dead broke by age 65. You know, when I say dead broke, I mean living on Social Security benefits less than $2,000 a month. Then I ask them, you know, have you realized or do you realize or have you noticed that there's more and more seniors working now than ever before? I ask them that question. Okay, but this is a you know, presentation where you're, having a dialogue conversation with them. So, hey, have you noticed there's more and more seniors working now than ever before? And you want them to respond, okay? So you want them to respond. They're going to say, well, yes, yes, okay, great. Okay, so then we have the little circle here where we have 2%. The 2% are what we call the well-to-do. Now, the well-to-do people are, are, are people who are, you know, living that retirement lifestyle. And, I mean, able to retire and keep the same house, the same car, Kind of status quo, nothing, nothing changes. But they worked hard their whole life and saved all their pennies their whole lives, and they've been able to maintain their current lifestyle. But what's happening with these individuals? They're praying to God every night that nothing catastrophic happens to them, because all it takes is one catastrophic event to put them from a little circle into the big circle. Not just for for them, but even for a loved one, a spouse or a child. One event to, to, to really wipe them out and put them into the into the in the big circle, and then we have the one percent who are wealthy. These are the people that we see on TV holding hands on the beach, seeing the grandkids of Disney World, living that retirement lifestyle that we all strive to live for. So the question, you know, I ask you, Mr. Client, is this: What circle are you currently in right now? And when I ask that question, I always pause, I always pause, because I want them to, you know. A, they might answer, or B, right there, and that's when you kind of sock them in the eyes right there, right? Because, hey, you pause. Hey, what circle are you currently in right now? And then it's kind of like, oh, wow, I, I never thought of it that way. I guess I'm in the big circle. Well, so welcome from the client. There's four things that these guys are doing in the little circle that the guys in the big circle are not doing, okay? So the first thing these guys are doing in the little circle is that they protect their assets, so, Mr. Client, if I were to ask you, what do you think most people will say the most important asset is? The majority of people say, as you guys know, will still say, my house, my car. I say, well, you know what, that's a very good answer. But in reality, the most important asset that we need to protect is our ability to, to protect our income, our ability to produce income. How, how are, are these guys in the little circle, how are they protecting their income? You know, and they, and they do it through life insurance. Then I told the client, Mr. Client, I said, do you realize, you know, I mean, you know, if I get a room full of 10 people, if I ask 10 people what is life insurance, 9 out of 10 of them are going to tell me, well, Ray, life insurance is if I die, my beneficiary gets X. I say, it's true, that's very good, you know, yes, that's what life insurance does. And if you die, your beneficiary gets X. But do you... But these guys in a little circle, they understand is that there's a whole new life insurance out there that you can use while you're still alive. An example of that is the critical illness policy. So when I talk about critical illness policy, I talk about the living benefits. And then I, I, I say, what's going to happen to you, Mr. Client, 
if you have a heart attack, stroke, cancer, uh, you know, something, something bad happens to you, are you going to be able to sustain your, your, your income? You know, a lot of people say, well, no. I say, so if you get hurt, if you're unable to work for any reason, uh, you know, are you still have money coming in? And they say, no. Well, well, this critical illness policy, what it does, if you, something, something happens to you, say you have a $100,000, $200,000, $300,000 face amount policy as an example, say $300,000, say something happens to you, you're unable to work, now you have $300,000 in cash that falls onto your lap. Do you think you'll be able to sustain yourself a little, a little better now and get money coming in? Obviously, yes. Then I go on to number two. Someone's a, someone's a client. So these guys in a little circle, they have cash on hand. So when the tires go out in the car or refrigerator goes out, these guys have cash on hand to take care of it. The guys in the big circle, uh, you know, what they do with their clients, they borrow the money from the father-in-law or they go to Sears and get a charge card and get more and more in debt. And the third thing these guys do in a little circle, they have a year of income saved up for that just in case. Okay, so so they, that means they have money for that just in case. So uh, you know, imagine having a year of income, cash, sitting in your bank account right now. How would that make you feel? And then you, you know, you, you want them to again. This is a, a dialogue type of conversation. You're asking the questions and you're waiting for them to respond. Then finally, the fourth thing these guys do in a little circle is that they they invest. Now. Most people in big circles think that things are investing. They say, no, Ray, no, I'm good, man. I'm investing. I got my 401k at my job. And I say, well, really? I mean, are, is your 401k really safe? Then I remind them, what happened back in 08 and 09 with people's 401ks? A lot of people's 401ks became a 201k literally overnight. So Mr. Client, if that happened before, could it happen again? Again, you're waiting for a response. They're going to say yes. Okay. Yes, yeah, so that's a reality. It did happen. Okay. So they can't they can't say no. It's a reality, right? So you want them to respond. Just you want them to engage with you in this conversation. And then then I always kind of do my big circle, little circle presentation. I'm a flip chart. I always do a big circle around my hand like this, and I say, Hey, do you believe around the whole chart? Do you believe what I just showed you to be true? I pause. I'll wait for a response. They say yes. Okay, great, Mr. Client. Mr. Client, if I could show you how to get from the big circle to the little circle, again, pointing to the big circle to the little circle, if I could show you how to get from the big circles, would you um, uh, want to see that? And obviously they're going to say, of course. Well, great, Mr. Client. Well, if I could show you one product that does all four of these things here and get you from the big circle to the little circle, would you want to see that product? Obviously they're going to say yes. Said, well, great. Mr. Client, before we go any further, just from what I showed you here right now, who do you know? You know, who, who else do you know that, you know, I mean, who, who do you know that, that could see this? Or who, who do you know that, you know, uh, should, should see this? And, you know, and they'll say, well, everybody needs to see this. And I said, well, great. And then I just kind of flip the chart to the next presentation. Our next thing here, this is the, uh, we, uh, what you see here is the financial needs analysis uh, form. We're going to actually update this one, so it'll be a newer one up here. But we're, we're going to change this out. But basically, it's a it's a financial needs analysis. Um, so before I go to the financial needs analysis, you know, I say, well, Mr. Client, okay. After I said, hey, who else do you know need to see this? Is it everybody? I said, well, Mr. Client, do I have your do I have your permission to go a little further? That's where going a little further, and, and, and obviously they're going to say yes. And then that's when I go into my F and A. So you're asking, you're asking permission to go a little further because you're getting ready to ask them some some detailed personal questions. You're asking them about their finances. You're asking about you know their rent and the mortgage, whatnot. So this is going to help you, um, you know, help your client. And then I flip the chart and I go into the power of 72, which you guys have already seen this already. Uh, you know, and this is pretty much self-explanatory. I talk about, you know, how Albert Einstein came up with this. I talk about, um, you know, the, the power of compound interest. Basically, you get 72 divided by whatever percentage and the equal amount of how many years it takes your money to double. So you got three scenarios there, and it shows the, the power of compound interest. And here, 
after I show this, I, I, I go through line by line with them. And then I talk about, um, you know, that, uh, you know, here, the, the power to compound interest and, and the fact that the people who, who understand compound interest, they earn it. The people who don't understand it, which is the majority of Americans, they pay it. Okay? And, and then I kind of make them see this and understand this. And then I flip over the chart again. It's a flip chart. I flip over the chart. Okay? And said, you know, uh, what is an uh, index universal life? And now you're well. And basically, guys, I, I read this line by line every single time. Again, it's a flip chart. I'm sitting right in front of them. And I'm, and I'm sitting there talking to them, having a conversation. And I talk about index universal life uh, insurance is a form of universal life insurance that provides a death benefit protection but offers the opportunity to build cash value through indexing, creating potential based in part or a portion of the increase, if any, or one or more stock markets. I shall explain here more in a second. I flip the page. Um, the benefits of the IUL is cash accumulation. Just like most cash value life insurance policies, the IUL policy provides the potential for cash accumulation within the policy. This cash can be accessed and used at the policy's owner discretion. The individual can always make a tax-free withdrawal. And I, I pause there and I emphasize uh, tax-free withdrawal. We're gonna highlight this and on the presentation, maybe, maybe bold it and, and, and highlight it, because it's so you can know that you want to emphasize this. The individual can always make a tax-free withdrawal up to the total amount of premiums that they have paid into the policy. The policy, uh, since of this withdrawal, simply represents a return of after-tax money that he or she originally contributed to the policy. I'll explain more here in a second, and I, and I keep going. Okay, I, I, I ensure the client, hey, I'm, I'm gonna explain more in a second as I turn the page. Protection against market loss. Without a doubt, this is a, one of the most incredible features of the IUL policy. This policy contractually guarantees that your cash value will never, never have a negative return due to market loss ever. And then I stop right there. I stop right there. And I said, let me explain to you how this works. Okay, so um, what this IUL does, it does three things. It covers you if you die. Obviously, there's life insurance, so you, so you, you know that you're, when you die, you're covered. It also covers you if you become ill, a lot we talked about. Remember when I asked Mr. Client, you know, do you have anything in place if you have a heart attack, if you have a stroke, and how, how do you, how are you going to ensure that you have money coming in for yourself? Because, you know, and so it covers you if you're sick. But the third thing, probably the most important thing as a client, that it covers you if you live too long. So again, those three things, cover you die, cover you sick, and covers you live too long. If you think about it as a client, what else is there? Okay, again, you're asking the question. Okay, you ask them because you want them to have the dialogue with you. Because, you, because when they have the dialogue with you, they don't understand. So what else is there? I said, well, no. You know, you, he's going to say, well, it covers everything. Exactly, it covers everything. That's what you want them to understand. So let me tell you how this works. So obviously you understand how the death benefit works, right? If you die, you're covered. We have an idea now how, how the, how the if I become sick or become ill part works, right? If I become ill, I know I have cash coming in to help me take care of that. But how, how the part works if I live too long? Well, we pay a premium anyway for our insurance, right? So part of our premium goes into the life insurance portion. The other part of the premium goes into what we call the cash accumulation. Now you've got your money playing in the stock market. So here, what I'm showing here, how you have a negative return, to, have an, you'll never have a negative return, return due to the market loss ever, is because you got all the ups in the market, but you get none of the downs. It's like, how, well, how can, you, how can you, you guarantee me that I'll, have, I'll never ever lose money? Well, how they're going to do that is they're going to cap you on how much you can make. They're going to cap you, say, let's say, for example, at 12%. You're capped at 12%. So you, so you know that you're never make more than 12%. But at the same time, someone might say, well, that's great, Ray, but I made 30 points last year in the market. Then my response to them, well, great, fantastic, but you're also at risk of losing 30 points. I'd rather have the protection and the guarantee being capped at 12% knowing that I will never lose any money. 
and, then, and, then, and again, it was, so, well, I understand. It's like, well, again, we're, we're capping you on how much you can make. But so now you got all the ups in the market, but you get none of the downs in the market. So each, so each time the market goes up, your money goes up. But when the market goes down, your money stops and it's protected. You will never lose any money. Not only are you not losing any money, but, he's, but your money is compounding and doubling every four to five, or, I'm sorry, every five to six years, like I just showed you in the, in the presentation, the last slide regarding the uh, compounding interest. So imagine your money doubling every five to six years and growing, and it's growing tax-free, meaning that you have access to your money whenever you want to. What's going to happen if you try to pull money out of your 401k or, and, and whatnot? You know, they're going to penalize you. They're going to, they're going to tax you, right, Mr. Client? Again, you want them to respond and say yes. Well, here your money is growing, it's doubling, it's compounding, and and you have money and you have access to it um, uh, anytime you want. So again, you protect it all the way around. So you also have the annual reset provision that allows the individual to capture and more importantly lock in each year on the positive return to the market to the stock market. So a policyholder cash value increased 10% in a given year at the time of the policy's anniversary. This 10% gain will now become the new uh, protected amount with the policy, even if the markets were to go down in the future. So most people, the client, what they do, they put money in the bank, they put money in investments, or they put money in insurance. And IUL does all three of things. So when you see here, Mr. Client, when it says IRC7702 um, on the right, on right-hand side of the screen here, uh, this talks about how your money is protected from the IRS, from taxes, your money is growing 1% tax-free. So what your IUL will give you, sir, is, is liquidity. What's liquidity? It's cash, right? It's cash. Okay, again, you ask your client that, they're going to respond, cash. Okay, so you have uh, unlimited contributions, you've got tax-free growth, you've got tax-free disposition, you've got no mandatory withdrawals, you're tax-free your heirs, you're sheltered from lawsuits, divorces, and whatnot. And so, so with a client, what this, what this policy is going to give you, it's going to give you protection, okay, protection. So we already established that already, right? So you protect if you die, protect if you're sick, but more importantly now, now you protect if you live too long. How powerful is that? And I, and I tell them that, how powerful is that? And they're going to say, oh, it's very powerful. Again, so you're having dialogue. See, the, the dialogue I'm having, they're, they're saying yes to everything I'm, I'm doing. They're agreeing to everything I'm saying. So you want to have that kind of conversation. You want to be talking to them and having them agree with everything you're saying and nodding yes or saying yes because you're walking them down the yes trail. Also, too, sir, we, now you have money for emergencies. And I kind of joke with them. You know, I have yet to see an emergency that has a price tag attached to it. Would you, would you agree? And they're like, well, yeah. Again, you, you're having them say yes as many times as possible. Now we have money for retirement. Uh, also, you got money for, uh, for college. You got money for savings, and and, and so forth. So, so uh, you know, talk about the power of college and the power of savings, and then you know, talk about hey, put taxes, you know, now, later, or never. Um, then we kind of showed I showed them this slide here how uh, you know the IUL, uh, you know, through the years how money it, it goes upwards, and then um, uh, then I kind of showed them this presentation here. Uh, and this is kind of the the, go, the 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 drive home home run pitch here. I just kind of show this presentation here, and basically I'm not going to go into any detail here, but basically what you're talking about has account A and account B. You know, the account A uh, you have uh, the middle column there have 19.5. Those are our actual number for the stock market those years, uh, and then account B is we're 12 percent capped, and I talk about the differences from each from each year. And then if you look at the, um, on, the, on the bottom of account A, it shows that in a 12-year period, you know, all you made was $16,000 in 12 years and, and, and with the money in the market, with $100,000. But also I showed here in the same numbers, the same everything, uh, in 12 years that uh, hey, you made, a, you know, an extra $129,351 uh, using your IUL. And I showed the value of that. And, and then at this point here, I said, Mr. Client, you know, you know, by this time they're, they're pretty impressed. So with the client, for you to really, for you for, to really understand this and, and to get the full understanding, you know, would you like for me to show you your numbers on what it will look like for you? That's that's my that's my my question. You know, and of course, by this time, 
they're very interested and want to know how it will look like for them. So if it's a client, so would you want to see the numbers how they're looking like for you? And he'll say, absolutely. Excuse me. And then I then I ask the if you know age and start asking the questions and, and then I get ready to prepare an illustration for them. But this is how we do our the flip chart presentations. Again, uh, these flip chart presentations are available online, or you can contact any, any one of us here at the office, and we'll be happy to give you your uh, flip chart presentation. Okay. And then as uh, says on the screen there, giddy up. <laughs>